now, 540 million years ago, in an ocean full of oxygen, those primitive bacteria have evolved. It's called Wewaxia, a new generation of complex multi-celled organisms. The Earth enters one of the most dynamic periods in its history, the Cambrian Explosion. Increased oxygen levels allow creatures to grow larger and develop bony skeletons. There are worms, sponges, and these trilobites, distant relatives of insects, lobsters, even scorpions. Life in the oceans blossoms. From microscopic bacteria to monsters. This is Anomalocaris. Nearly two feet long, it has large eyes razor-sharp teeth, and grasping limbs. All it has to do is take its pick. Trilobite can't write itself. Its soft belly is exposed. Also found in the sea is Pikaia, only an inch and a half long. They may be the first organism with a spine. Over millions of years, this simple structure will evolve into the spine that keeps us standing. 375 million years ago, a new species lives in the water, swimming. It uses its neck to raise itself up. and its fins function as legs, allowing it to move out of the water. This is one of the most important moments in the making of our planet. The planet has come a long way, from a lump of burning rock and dust to a blue and green world bursting with life. There are now fish, plants, and this. The dragonfly. It's called Meganeura. This insect is the size of an eagle. What were once legs have evolved into wings, extending the dragonfly's hunting territory over a vast area. There are also millipedes and spiders down there.
These creatures, called arthropods, were among the first to set foot on land hundreds of millions of years ago. They look almost identical to the bugs that invade our homes today, except for one big difference. Like the Meganeura, they're monsters. It's a world full of giants, where millipedes are six feet long, and scorpions are the size of wolves. This is because the oxygen level is much higher than it is today, which allows their respiratory systems to be more efficient, fueling their bodies to grow larger. So far, animals have been laying their eggs in the water. But a lizard-like creature called the Hylonomus prefers land. Its eggs contain all the water and nutrients that the developing fetus needs. The babies grow in their own self-contained pond. The egg is a major evolutionary breakthrough. Allowing animals to leave the water behind and conquer land. This baby Hylonomus leads the advance. As a new creature, the reptile. Dead plant matter builds up and decays into dense, soggy layers. Over hundreds of millions of years, rocks cover these layers and heat from the Earth's core and pressure from the overlying rocks transform these layers into seams of coal. If these plant eaters look tough, the carnivores must be seriously mean. like this Gorgonopsid, a perfectly engineered prehistoric killing machine. Something strange happens. The ground gets hot. Enormous pressure builds beneath the surface and lava spews into the air. It's a flood basalt eruption. A massive plume of mantle rises up from deep inside the earth and pushes molten rock out through fissures in the Earth's crust. The lush paradise is now a lifeless hell. The scudosaurs and the gorgonopsids are dead. They're the first casualties in the greatest mass extinction the world has ever seen, the Permian extinction. On the other side of the continent Gondwana, nothing's changed. Yet. It appears to be snowing, but the temperature is about 70 degrees. It's actually ash, fallout from the eruptions some 10,000 miles away. Sulfur dioxide from the eruptions fills the atmosphere. As it rains, the gas turns to sulfuric acid and burns everything it falls on. What was a local disaster has now turned global.
The Siberian eruptions increase the Earth's carbon dioxide levels. The atmosphere gets hotter. Water evaporates. And vegetation dies. Around the world, life on land is being wiped out. And life in the oceans has also been compromised. The waters turn pink. Plants, trilobites, and predators disappear. The new hotter atmosphere heated the oceans and stripped them of oxygen. Now this pink algae is one of the few life forms that can survive in the stagnant water. The Siberian eruptions transformed the entire planet. Nothing, not even the deepest ocean floor, is beyond their reach. Bubbles of methane gas escape from beneath the seabed. Methane is a greenhouse gas, at least 20 times deadlier than carbon dioxide. Released into the atmosphere, this powerful gas pushes up temperatures even further. It's now almost 105 degrees, 11 degrees hotter than before the Siberian eruptions. Creatures that survived the initial destruction now face a new and deadly environment. Few will live. It's been 500,000 years since the eruptions first began, and all this time, the lava's been pouring out. By now, it covers an area the size of the United States, with a layer of molten rock nearly four miles deep. Ninety-five percent of the species are gone. A few survive by eating anything they can find and living in burrows underground. But everything else is dead. 250 million years ago, the Earth reverts back to an almost lifeless planet. But that's about to change again.